The other point with this energy rebate, so-called energy rebate, is doesn't it tell us that Labor has just actually given up on fixing the electricity system mess and lowering prices? They just, they, they can't lower prices. They're spending $3.5 billion on these rebates. That could build an enormous amount of generation if they knew what they were doing. Exactly right. So, of course, everyone remembers they promised a $275 reduction uh, when they came to power. We've seen bill increases of around $1,000 for Australians since Labor has, has come to power. They have no pathway to deliver reductions, so now they're just throwing money around. But, you know, we've seen all this before, Chris. This is what uh, governments did back in the 70s and the 80s. It, it failed. Uh, inflation rages when you have these sorts of policies. Uh, disposable incomes go backwards, as they have in Australia. Seven and a half percent reduction since Labor's come to power on average. Uh, huge, huge uh, reductions in the standard of living for Australians with a mortgage. And there's no end in sight with these policies. This is a bad budget. It's not a budget that will alleviate Australians' standard of living woes. Uh, and it's politically motivated at the end of the day for an election that'll be sometime in the next year. Now, you talked before about some of the other measures, these tax credits that are going to be driven towards a green hydrogen and the like, and billionaires like uh, Twiggy Forrest will be lining up for that. And as we mentioned, they've done nothing to actually fix the uh, electricity system themselves with their renewable transition. Does this mean that tomorrow night Peter Dutton will reveal the details of his planned nuclear energy transition? Well, we'll certainly continue to lay out the next next part of our, our policy focus, Chris. I mean, we haven't been small target. Um, we've shown a real contrast to the Labor Party. We showed a real contrast on the voice referendum, of course. We're showing a real contrast as we lay out the most significant change in energy policy that this country has seen in a long while with a shift towards nuclear, and we'll continue to talk about that. But we'll also talk about the cost of living crisis and the housing crisis Australians are facing. Um, we've seen, uh, again, a very sharp increase in immigration numbers. They went up again in this budget to 1.7 million over the coming years. Um, for that time period, it was closer Just, to a million uh, in power, but yeah, let me into, we'll talk about immigration tonight as well, but uh, on related issues, on border protection, the, the, this, there's precious little in this budget when it comes to savings, yet Labor are suggesting in the budget that they'll save $250 million by essentially mothballing the detention processing centre on Nauru. Now, with six boats already arriving, I don't see that they can actually shut down Nauru. Well, exactly right. You've got two hapless ministers looking after border security right now, and, of course, the boats are lining up. I mean, the, the real problem with this whole issue is if you send the signal that you're weak, if you send the signal that you haven't got it under control, if you send the signal that you've got ministers who really don't want to control the borders, then the people smugglers get going again, and that's exactly what's happened. And that doesn't just have a tra tragic implication uh, for those trying to get into the country. It, it has... Uh, huge implications for costs and budgets uh, and so the idea that that this is not a real risk now well uh, it looks to me to be a very significant risk and I've got to say at a time like this who, who would you want uh, controlling and managing your borders those ta hapless ministers or Peter Dutton who uh, as we know has been able to control the borders in the past just finally, one of the astounding things about this budget, from my point of view, is Jim Chalmers banks uh, his second surplus. Great, good on him. Uh, good fortune, but good on him. But then he looks out uh, four years hence and it's just deficits, deep deficits as far as the eye can see. He seems to have no ambition to return the budget to a structural balance or surplus. Would you undertake to get the budget back to a balanced situation in the first term of a coalition government? Well, absolutely, but I'll go one step beyond that, which is to re-establish the rule that the budget must strive towards structural balance, and that make, means that you, you grow the economy faster than you're spending. That is a crucial role that, that has been in place, a structural balance or a, a move towards structural balance since the 1990s. Chris, it's part of the was part of the Charter of Budget Honesty. It's been taken out by Jim Chalmers so that he can uh, uh, throw uh, fuel on the fire uh, 
uh, as we go into an election year, uh, but we'll all pay a high price for that. And uh, that is a very, very bad move by this government, but it's one that means that they're not taking the fight against this homegrown inflation uh, under their watch. They're not taking that fight seriously.